right, briefly, let, let me capture this just in case I decide to make a YouTube video about it. I picked up one of these Cisco MX300s from an auction. It was the one that was least scratched up and it came with wheels. So that helps with getting it moved around the shop. Um, if it was a wall mount unit, I probably would have avoided it. Now, you're kind of locked into here unless you plug in an HDMI or DVI in the back and then it'll just immediately pop up and start displaying that, but you'll still get this touch panel required message. Current internet wisdom says that if I plug it into my network, which I've done, 192, 168, et cetera, et cetera, uh, I should be able to log into it, which I almost almost did over here. But looks like we need to do a factory reset. So if I had to guess, next to the service one is probably going to be our reset. And we press it. Of course, they want to make sure that you really mean it. The reset and paper cuts a little small ballpoint pen would have been better. So I'm pressing hold. Awesome. Now it might give it a new IP address. I'm going to have to type that into the web thing. So security risk indeed, because <laughs> my password is just admin and nothing, but just to double check. I'm going to load that back up. Here we go. It is admin. Guys, if you're trying to get into stuff that's been reset, it's admin, admin, it's nothing, nothing. It's admin password, it's admin blank. In this case, it's supposed to be admin blank. Let's give it a go. Ooh. I think we're in like Flynn. All right, uh, I'm gonna go fumble fuck around with this stuff and then uh, I'll come back if there's anything interesting. All right, so we found ourselves in another one of these videos that I'm making for the six people in the world that are gonna get one of these uh, Cisco MX 300s or 200s. Uh, this is the Gen 2 model. Um, I've decided to keep it. Uh, we're, I'm gonna finish cleaning this thing up. Uh, the backside's removed. I think there's uh, five screws, uh, not counting the top ones, they hold onto the camera. And then there's one hidden here. You have to cut away some of the label to get to that one hiding. Uh, and this is what it looks like. I used a um, upholstery tool to pull these tabs out of their respective holes all along on the side. You'll need to do that first, and that gets you to a dozen or so little Torx screws that lets the backside come off. And once it's off, you have access to all the gubbins. Now, uh, the reason I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up into a quick YouTube video is to, uh, again, talk to the six people that are gonna be trying to take one of these apart or decide is it worth doing or not. Um, I thought I might be able to find something simple like um, a USB header or, you know, a positive, negative, uh, D plus, D minus for USB for this uh, little 1080p HD camera. Cursory search, I didn't find anything like that. Um, this, this side here is a ribbon cable for an IR blaster and a couple other things. And this one is for the motor controls to move this thing um, left, right, up and down. And um, presumably the, the data for the cameras also in here. And, but there, you know, there wasn't any sort of really obvious header or something else that came off the backside of this, but there's a setting to have it not look for the touch panel. And so that gets rid of that message that you saw earlier. And so now it just comes up, it'll come up to the wallpaper I've selected, which is nice. Uh, you can put like your company's name or family photo or whatever. Uh, so it has HDMI out, DVI out, LAN, uh, the remote connection, uh, two DVI or two HDMI inputs. And um, if you just use one of these and you set it to auto detect it, it will just act like a normal monitor you plug into it. It's got a couple extra inputs for additional microphones, which I've got. Um, I'll be playing around with that. And of course the service stuff that we talked about earlier. Now, because it has two and I want to toggle between the two, I'm also going to purchase because they're useless by themselves. So you can find them for like 20 bucks on eBay. The actual remote control that this thing was complaining about, I found it. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. Um, I might do a part two of this video where we connect it to kind of a DIY thing or like a small business that maybe wants to look a little bit more professional and have some um, conference calling on one of these things with the GWSI camera. Um, so I think there's, there's some SIP protocols and there's some like PBX connections that you can do. Of course, Cisco through WebEx wants you to use theirs. I'm going to give that a try and see if that's free or cheap. And if not, we'll uh, kind of rule our own. So uh, let me get this thing wiped down and then uh, we'll take a quick look at it once it's all uh, cleaned up and put back together.
All right, so there it is all booted up. Uh, looking pretty decent, man. It's uh, I think it's just 1080p, as best I can tell. Uh, but it's a nice, high-quality 1080p. And something about just having a big screen on wheels. <laughs> I think we're going to find a lot of use out of this thing. So, uh, like I said earlier, make sure you subscribe if you want to see if I can get this thing up and running and working as an actual uh, teleconferencing system. Sort of a... Well, it's not really DIY if you just bought the thing that <laughs> massive corporations were using. But um, anyways, let's see if we can do it without being a massive corporation. All right. Uh, thanks a lot for following along. Uh, subscribe for Julian's Random Projects. I'm hanging in, there ain't no doubt. And I'm hanging tough, over and out, over and out.